I was homeless. I was out there in front of the liquor store panhandling. They came up, about five cars, turned around, told me to get my behind in the floor. You I questioned. You mean the police? Yes, the police. <laughs> and the minute I turned around and I questioned them as of why, they turned around, slammed me into the floor. Started hitting me with billy clubs across the midsection of my body, across my head. And it was like, stay down, stay down, stay down. So I stood down. There's no way I'm going to get up after you've been beaten a few times with a belly club. There's no way I'm going to get up. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I know is, is that after that, I was handcuffed, hogtied, and I was thrown into the back of the car. I was not told, told anything as far as Miranda rights. I was never told my rights. I was never told as why I'm being arrested. But I was thrown into a cell. After being thrown in a cell, after a few hours, I was sent to another precinct. I was thinking they was going to give me medical help, being that I was being transferred, but no, they put me in another precinct. After about a few more hours of that, of just sitting there and waiting and waiting, they turned around and they was like, they opened up the cell and they was like, Mr. Rodriguez, you know, like, we're very sorry because um, the person that did do the crime, we done caught, so here's $20, you can take a cab home. I never was able to get one batch number. They were all covered. I was never to get anything as far as who they were or where they're from or what district they were from. All I know is is that they just slammed me in there and that was it. I got caught up in one of these, what I call a, a sweep, a, a quota for arrest, where I was on the subway and they actually held the train to find victims to arrest. And so they pulled me off. Uh, they trumped up a charge to make it justified. They said that I was uh, occupying more than one seat, even though the train was empty. And they picked me up. They put me in a van. Uh, cop's partner went downstairs and found another person that was probably doing something similar we could charge them for. And then they had their quota filled for the night, and they took us in. And they got some overtime out of it. My reaction was, it was outrageous. My reaction was like, don't y'all got better things to do? There's more serious crimes happening on the subway than me, you know, occupying one seat. Here at Picture the Homeless, that kind of ties in with our civil rights campaign about, you know, just like we have a legal clinic down at Holy Apostles to teach people about, like, know your rights, so how you can better educate yourself and not be, you know, flim flammed by the cops. Because a lot of times, if you don't know your rights, the cops will tell you your rights, which is questionable. They'll tell you what they think you should know is your rights, and a lot of times they mislead you. A lot of people don't know what their rights truly are. Most of the time the police get over because the people they target, and they usually target about profiling. The police have profiled me and they figured that I was black, and they looked on my driver's license and figured according to where I lived, that my address is the South Bronx, they figured that they had a win-win situation. They said he probably has no power, he, he probably doesn't know what his rights is, and so they misjudged me. The cop was shocked when he had to come into court and face me. He thought it was just a slam dunk where I would do it overnight, and then I would probably be so happy that I got released, I would just let it go. And he made, he made various excuses to the judge why he picked on me. So he, he looked like a homeless person that I saw in the past, and I was trying to teach him a lesson. And when he lost that, he said, oh, he looked at threatening, like he was going to harm somebody. And he went on with the series of stuff until he perjured himself and just lost. Changes I would like to see is more policing of the police. And when I say that, I don't mean that CCRB crap. That's, that's in effect because they really don't do anything. It's really a waste of time. You're virtually giving the police information on how to defeat you when you make a complaint. It really goes nowhere. The main thing in order to get things changed is just the usual like we try to do here. You have to get enough people to unify together to put pressure on the city or the politicians to make a change. Otherwise, nothing will ever be done. I mean, you can voice your opinion, but a lot of times it won't go further than that unless you get enough people outraged and get them, like the Trayvon Martin case, when at first the Florida state attorney said, well, we don't bow to public pressure, but actually they do. If you get enough people together, they'll be forced to do something about it. And that's what we have to do.